Over 600 miles north of the Arctic Circle, the world's northernmost Paleolithic settlement has yielded evidence of ancient hunters butchering woolly mammoths 26,000 years ago. In the coldest inhabited region on Earth, the frozen grounds have revealed the northernmost Paleolithic settlement ever found, where ancient hunters butchered woolly mammoths at the site 26,000 years ago. Logic tells you that if humans were living this far north 26,000 years ago, they could have easily made the trip to North America by this time as well. Experts confirmed that ancient hunters resided on Kotelny Island a remarkable 990 kilometers, or 615 miles, north of the Arctic Circle. Their butchering tools have been found alongside multiple bones of extinct woolly mammoths. Scientists have restored 70% of the skeleton of one Paleolithic mammoth on which these hardy people were feasting. The mammoth was butchered by people. A large number of processed bones and tusk fragments were found. There are linear cuts, traces of chopping blows on the vertebra. People used a wide range of tools for cutting. There is not a single bone that would be without traces of human impact. We are talking about the northernmost human site in the Paleolithic era. This northern outpost affords scientists an understanding not only that man had conquered such northern latitudes but how he existed. In particular, we now know how they butchered a mammoth. A view that ancient humans were reluctant to hunt the huge hairy monsters appears confounded by the new finds. As the third most frequently depicted animal in ancient cave paintings, woolly mammoths were in high demand for early humans. Mammoth flesh made for an abundant source of protein, while their furry coats were waterproofed by the sebaceous oil their glands secreted, and made for warm ice age clothing. A large number of processed bones and tusk fragments were found. There are linear cuts, traces of chopping blows on the vertebra. People used a wide range of tools for cutting. There is not a single bone that would be without traces of human impact. 70% of a newly found mammoth had been collected. A large number of tusk fragments were found, indicating processing of the animal's remains. At the moment, the site is the northernmost known place of human existence in the Paleolithic era. Kotelny is the largest of the islands of the Novosibirsk archipelago, washed by the Laptiv Sea and the East Siberian Sea. Previous woolly mammoth remains have been found here. Spanning from the first recorded tools made by hominins 3.3 million years ago to the end of the Ice Age 11,500 years ago, the Paleolithic era was largely defined by the construction of primitive stone tools. Bands of nomadic hunters who had foraged for berries and roots were now beginning to hunt animals actively. It certainly helped that the melting ice allowed these hunters to enter previously inaccessible areas, with grazing animals like woolly mammoths doing the same. The woolly mammoth skull, meanwhile, was found to have been broken in the same way as 32 mammoth skulls unearthed at another Russian dig site in 2008. The conclusion there was that ancient hunters cracked the animal skulls open to feast on their brains. However, at the time these ancient humans populated this outpost, it was joined to the mainland and the climate, while northerly, was milder than nowadays. A full scientific journal report on the exciting new finds is being prepared which will include evidence of human settlement here. What's more? Paleozoologists have suggested ancient people used hunting dogs 12,000 to 13,000 years ago, and breeding most likely started 15,000 years ago. These people were highly skilled Arctic travelers, they ranged over vast distances to obtain vital resources, intercepting both the large caribou herds that migrated widely over the frozen tundra, but also targeting female polar bears as they hibernated in winter dens. The most valuable parts of these animals were transported back to this year-round base camp to build up the food supply for the rest of the group. We also know that they were making their hunting tools from obsidian, a kind of rare volcanic glass. Research has shown that this material was sourced from around 1,500 kilometers or nearly 1,000 miles away, so they were either traveling these enormous distances themselves, or obtaining it via long-distance exchange networks with other mobile hunting groups. Indeed, sledding dogs are far older than previously thought, enabling people to hunt hibernating polar bears. Remains from Jokov Island in the East Siberian Arctic, 
close by to the 26,000-year-old kill site, show trained sled dogs existed almost 10,000 years ago. The genome of the dog is directly related to the iconic modern-day Siberian husky, the Alaskan Malamute and Greenlandic sled dog. The training of these dogs happened thousands of years earlier than had been appreciated, according to new research. The DNA from dog bones from the island indicates that domesticated sled dogs were used in the Arctic at least 9,500 years ago, some 6,500 to 7,500 years earlier than many scientists had believed. The genome of the dog is directly related to the iconic modern-day Siberian husky, the Alaskan Malamute and Greenlandic sled dog, but can also be traced back to Siberian wolves from 33,000 years ago. The sample for DNA analysis was taken from a tooth on this lower jaw. Scientists were able to conclude that modern sled dogs and the ancient dog share a common origin in Arctic Siberia more than 9,500 years ago. Until now, we have thought that sled dogs were only about 3,000 to 2,000 years old. The ancient hunters kept a large number of dogs, some seen as similar to modern Siberian huskies. The sled animals become adapted to the extreme Arctic cold. They have adaptations that are probably linked to improved oxygen uptake, which makes sense in relation to long-distance sledding. This emphasizes that sled dogs and Arctic people have worked and adapted together for more than 9,500 years. Based on that DNA, scientists have sequenced the oldest dog genome ever, mapped the entire dog genome, and the results show an extremely early differentiation of dog breeds and diversity. Modern sled dogs have most of their genomes in common with these ancient dogs. So, they are more closely related to this ancient dog than to other dogs and wolves. But not just that, we can see traces of crossbreeding with wolves such as the 33,000-year-old Siberian wolf, but not with modern wolves. This information further emphasizes that the origin of the modern domesticated dog goes back much further than we had ever thought. The study also investigated the use of dogs for polar bear hunting, and sleeping female polar bears were a key target. Hibernating polar bears, a key food source, were hunted. By using hunting dogs and targeting dens this gave a stable result and was completely predictable. The tactics of the hunt were seemingly the following. In early springtime the entrance to the den was covered with snow, it frightened the bear and made it search the way out through the den's roof where there was a breathing hole. In wintertime the breathing hole could be covered with the snow, which was an ideal provoking action. It is very convenient to hit the bear when there appears the head and the neck on the surface. The tactics of such hunting seem to be confirmed by traces of hunting weapons left on the bones of a polar bear by weapons of the inhabitants of the Jokov site. Such traces are found almost exclusively on bear skulls there is only one rib with a trace of a dangerous wound. In all cases where it is possible to establish, they tried to inflict the wound into the brain capsule from the back, from the left or right side, directing the blow either directly into the brain capsule, into the eye, neck, and back of the head, while the latter, most likely are misses. They butchered dead animals at the place of prey. Newborn cubs became permitted prey for dogs participating in the hunt and cubs of the second year of life, having a mass of 70 to 140 kilograms, already represented a certain bonus, increasing the volume of one-time prey. The bones of polar bears have a significantly greater number of dog bites than the bones of a reindeer. This circumstance is easily explained by two important reasons. Firstly, winter conditions suggest the most complete use of food resources. Secondly, the use of meat and bones of bears for feeding dogs is essential, they are trained to this beast, therefore, the dog will not only not be afraid of him, but will also know that this beast can be defeated and eaten, a simple hunting training, which has not changed much over the past thousand years.